But let's break this down a little bit more because what's a watt? Let's break this down into the units of a watt. Joules so if we break the watt down into joules per second, how would we interpret the intensity of the sunlight on our solar panels now? Now, that's kind of hard to understand, isn't it? What, what, what would be a number I can put in front of the seconds without changing the fraction? One. And what's a number I can put in front of this unit without changing the fraction? One. So, for so if we build a one square meter solar panel mm -hmm. and leave it out for one second. Seven, oh, for seven joules of energy. Seven joules of energy. Okay. So again, when you're working with these complicated units, it's a very effective technique to put a one under everything on the bottom. If there's more than one unit on the bottom, put more than one one. Okay, so let's interpret this intensity. Um, so for one meter, for an area of one meter squared, um, it will absorb a lot of loss of energy. So this tells us to say how intense the light is. Yeah. So if we make a one meter squared panel, it'll absorb, uh, it'll, say that one more time, it'll? It'll absorb 11 watts of power. Of power, not energy. It'll absorb 11 watts of power. That means one square meter would be enough to run an 11 watt light bulb. So suppose we wanted to run a uh, 100 watt light bulb, approximately how much area would we need? 10 or 11. Yeah, or maybe nine. nine. Say we had, say, nine square meters, how much power would that absorb? Nine. Yeah, so again, this is a very practical idea. If you're designing solar panels, you ask how intense is the sunlight around my house? How much power do I need? And then you figure out how big the panels have to be. All right, and that's a good way to make test questions too. Okay, so uh, this is uh, that. So the intensity is a property of the light. So for example, you would want to build your house, you wouldn't want to build your house in the shade, because if the house is in the shade, the intensity would be low. You'd want to build it where the sunlight is very bright because you'd have a high intensity. Now, there's another way to interpret this if we break down the units for watts. So what happens if we break down the units for watts? What does this become? Joules per second times meter squared. And now, how would we interpret it? If you had one meter squared area, and you ran it for one second, it would <coughs> absorb 11 joules of energy. Now, this is energy. So again, if we build a one square meter uh, solar panel, and we leave it out for one second, it'll absorb 11 joules of energy. What if we hold it out there for two seconds, 22 joules of energy? Or what if we hold it for two seconds and it's three square meters? Well, then 33 joules of energy. So you could use this to figure out many things uh, that might be interesting to you. All right, so again, the intensity is a very practical type of unit uh, uh, when we're thinking about the energy that we can get from sunlight. Okay, so that takes us to one end of our uh, table. All right, now moving backwards, going back to the force, now we need the concept of pressure. And you can see I'm not going to say pressure is P because then I might get confused it with power. So we'll write those words out. That's a very easy confusion to have here because we're working with power and pressure a lot. Uh, do you remember what the units are for pressure? Pascal. That's good. It's good to remember that. Yeah, Pascals. It also starts with a P, but there's a PA. So that's the unit from last semester. Now we need an equation that relates the force and the pressure. except it's the reverse. Pressure equals force over area. Pressure equals force over area. Pressure equals force over area. So now we can say, what, what is a Pascal? Um, <clears throat> um, newtons over meters So let's say um, that uh, you uh, are feeling the pressure of seven pascals. What does that mean? Um, that means that for one meter squared, um, I'd be feeling seven, uh, seven newtons of force. So if there's a seven, if there's pressure of seven pascals in a certain place, that means that if you just look at one square meter, it's going to feel a force of seven newtons. So if you looked at two square meters, it would feel a force of 14 newtons. Okay. Um, so again, let's not abbreviate this as P, because we don't want to confuse it with power. Now let me point out one of the most common mistakes I've seen students make here. A lot of people start thinking that pressure and force are the same thing. 
because they sound like very similar words. Um, so for example, if the question is asking for the force, they just find the pressure. Or if it's asking for the pressure, they just find the force. We'll know there are two different things in physics. So we have to keep in mind that these are not the same concept. All right, so that will give us our pressure. All right, and then the, the interesting thing that we learned, uh, this, this is all supposed to be applied to electromagnetic radiation, right? But the interesting thing we learned is that electromagnetic radiation exerts pressure. Now, this is kind of surprising because you don't normally feel pressure from like uh, light bulbs. You don't normally feel pressure from light bulbs. Um, however, if you have uh, an intense enough electromagnetic radiation, it actually will exert pressure on something. Um, so, now we want to relate intensity from all the way over here on the right hand side of our flow chart and pressure all the way here on the left. Let me give myself some more space here. This is the main point of the flow chart to show how these concepts from very different parts of the flow chart come together. All right, and now this, the intensity here, we're going to be finding the radiation pressure. So we're going to say that the radiation pressure, and then there's simply a formula that you have to memorize. Uh, what is it? I over C, maybe? Let me look that up. Actually, you don't need to memorize it. You have to look it up. So I'm going to look it up. Yeah, the, uh, the radiation pressure is I over C. I over C. Um, what does I stand for? Intensity. And C? Speed of light. Yeah, in a vacuum. C is the speed of light in the vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, and again, I'm not going to abbreviate the P because I don't want to confuse this with power. Uh, sometimes you might see this written as S over C because intensity is also S. Um, oh, before I forget, something I should have mentioned is remember that uh, uh, one way to find intensity of electromagnetic radiation is the Poynting vector. Remember that the Poynting vector in your textbook is abbreviated as S. And the Poynting vector, well, the magnitude of the Poynting vector it just tells you the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation. Um, so I'm not going to put that in the flowchart here because we don't need it for this particular problem. Maybe we should after we finish the problem. But anyway, um, the, the Poynting vector is S. At least it's the, the magnitude of S. Okay. For electromagnetic radiation. Okay. Um, now actually, uh, a complication that we saw is how much radiation pressure you feel depends on whether you're absorbing the radiation or reflecting it. Um, for example, think about somebody who's uh, on ice. And let's say somebody, uh, say, throws a bowling ball at them and they catch it. Well, if you, if you catch a bowling ball, you're going to start moving in the direction that you caught it in. Um, but compare it to somebody who catches the bowling ball and somebody who catches the bowling ball and then throws it back. Who, who, who's going, whose motion is going to be affected more? The person who catches the bowling ball, he's obviously going to move in this direction. Or the person who catches it and throws it back. They're both going to move in this direction, but who's going to move more? Okay, that's right. A lot of people give the wrong answer to that, but that's right. And the reason is, um, it's basically conservation of momentum. The bowling ball, say, had, concert, had, had, had momentum towards the wall. So if you catch it, now you have momentum towards the wall. But then if you throw the bowling ball in this direction, now you've given the bowling ball momentum towards that wall, and to cancel that out and conserve the momentum, you have to have even more momentum in this direction. So what that means is um, the radiation and pressure is different depending on whether you absorb the radiation or reflect it. So which one would be bigger, when you absorb the radiation or when you reflect it? When you reflect it. That's right, because that's like catching and throwing back the bowling ball. If you reflect it, not only do you have pick up all the momentum from the radiation, but then you actually give it momentum in the opposite direction. And then you have to get more momentum in the direction it was originally moving to, to keep momentum constant. Uh, in fact, if you think about it, if you throw the bowling ball back at the same, in the same direction that it came in, you're just going to uh, have double the effect on yourself. So um, if you're simply reflecting it at the same speed it came in, that's going to double the effect. So radiation pressure that's absorbed is I over C. But radiation pressure that's reflected would be what? Now, remember we decided when you reflect something, you have twice the effect. Oh, so just 2i over c. Right. You get twice the effect. 
because not only did you have to cancel out all of its original momentum, but you gave it momentum equal to momentum in the opposite direction. Okay, well, you can just put these in your cheat sheet and look them up, but that wouldn't be a bad test question to explain where these formulas came from. Uh, and to ex or at least it wouldn't be bad to explain why the reflected radiation pressure is bigger than the absorbed radiation pressure. All right, so uh, this is a very common mistake that people make, uh, not realizing there's two different formulas for radiation pressure. In fact, even last time when we made our flow chart, I don't think I put both of these in the chart. But this is such a common trap, we should put them both in, so you can see them both. So you always have to check, are you absorbing the radiation or reflecting it? And that will tell you how much pressure you're picking up. Now remember, this doesn't tell you how much force you're feeling, but you could use that to figure out the force. Now keep in mind, radiation pressure is just a type of pressure. So if you know the radiation pressure, you can plug it into this equation to find the force. And then if you wanted to, you could figure out work and all this stuff down here. Okay, so those are how all of these different uh, concepts. So I have these arrows here because this equation shows you how to go from intensity to pressure.